Hello, hello again. This is Sharla Snow, and I want to welcome you to this week's training on taking your education beyond the basics. We are on class number five of our eight week series, and tonight's topic is going to be all about healthy skin and body. So as you know, we do a weekly training every week on various different topics to help you become empowered, to be able to take your education beyond the basics and to become a healer in your own home. And we are now on class number five. If you've missed any of the previous classes, you can go back and catch those, the recording of those, or you can wait for these classes to cycle back around again, because once we've completed these eight classes, we have a couple of bonus classes and then we repeat it. So it's up to you. You can go back and find the recordings from the past, or you can and catch it on when it recycles again. So again, tonight's class is class number five, healthy skin and body. So we're going to dive right in because I have a ton of content for you, a ton of information to share, and it might be a good idea if you want to just quickly close out any other windows that you have open on your computer or distractions, grab up some pen, a pen, some paper, um, tell your kids to give you a, a break for the next 45 minutes or so, and we're going to jump into all things skin. So our skin is part of our integumentary body system. So we are going to next week talk about all of the different body systems, but tonight we're going to be specifically just talking about the integumentary body system, which actually comprises your skin, hair, and nails. Um, but again, we're going to focus primarily just on skin today. We have on average 18 square feet of skin, and that makes our skin our body's largest organ. The skin has two primary layers. It has the inner layer that's called the dermis and the outer layer that's called the epidermis. And it consists of several strata that produce keratin along with melanin, which gives the skin its color. Um, it also contains Merkel cells, which facilitate touch. So the reception of being able to feel things, reception of touch, and also Langerhans cells, which produce antigen to, antigens to support the immune system. So it's a pretty complex organ, and at a deep level, the cells there will continually divide in order to push older cells up to the surface to be worn off. In fact, millions of these cells are worn off every single day, which leaves behind a new epidermis about every five to seven weeks. Isn't that interesting? We basically are resurfaced every five to seven weeks. Um, the skin protects, it has a couple of really important functions. It protects the internal organs. It guards against infection. Um, so it's like this barrier for, um, for our organs and for our body to, um, to protect. It also regulates temperature and um, and also any temperature change and hydration levels, and it does that through perspiration. Um, it stores water, fat, glucose, so it is pretty important. Um, it also excretes, so it detoxes our body. We detox through our skin, so it excretes waste. The skin also generates vitamin D when it is exposed to sunlight, and the skin also secretes melanin to protect against some sunburn. One thing I think is really fascinating about the skin is just how amazingly, amazing it is at repairing itself and how it's able to form new cells to repair minor cuts and abrasions that we get on a regular basis. I find that to be so fascinating and what um, an amazing gift that we have in our skin. So there's lots of different conditions, however, that afflict the skin from wounds to acne to eczema to warts and scarring and aging and many things in between all of that and so today we're going to be covering a lot of those things um, everything that i could think of that was related to the skin so first of all i want to point out something that i think is really important to take note of and that's that our skin is most often just a reflection just a mirror or a barometer for other imbalances that are going on inside the body. So it's really important to focus on, when you're looking to improve skin, it's important to focus on detoxing, cleansing, 
nutrition and supplementing really those those vital nutrients that we need in order to give our skin the best possible foundation for health. So whenever we talk about some of these um, issues that we're going to be talking about tonight, I just want to give you kind of a an overview of which supplements are most important for skin health to make sure that you are supplementing those to give your skin the best chance. So the best skin supplements that we have are, of course, omega-3s. Omega-3s are so important for the health of our skin. We have the omega-3s in our Lifelong Vitality supplements, which is a great way to get them. Or if you're if you have an aversion to taking pills, you can also get liquid omegas. They're in the children's. Um, they're actually a phenomenal, and I think they're underrated because they're called children's or in that section of, of children's supplements. But there there's a powerful liquid omega three um, supplement that you can get through DoTerra as well. Um, and I sometimes will use that even in supplementing with my lifelong vitality. Another supplement that I I think is critical, especially when you're dealing with any sort of skin flare-ups or eruptions at all, and that is terazyme. Um, enzymes make a huge significant difference for those who are dealing with dermatitis and eczema and various conditions of the skin. So I would very much encourage um, those who are dealing and suffering with that to be taking enzymes. Also probiotics, we know there's this connection between our gut health and our skin health, very, very connected. So probiotics are also re- are highly recommended, um, like the PB Assist or the PB Assist Junior. And then of course the Zendocrine Complex, and that's the herbal, the pill form of the Zendocrine. And really great at just keeping the detox pathways open, keeping those filters open like we talked about in one of our earlier webinars so that you're not trying to push. Um, The skin is really like the last resort, resort when it comes to detoxing. And so if our other internal organs are detoxing properly, our liver, our kidneys, Um, our colon, if those things are working um, optimally, then we don't see as much with the detoxing through, um, it it lightens up the load of detox on the skin. So Zendocrine complex would be the last one. So keep those in mind, omegas, the terazyme probiotics, and the Zendocrine. Keep that in mind anytime we talk about regimens and protocols tonight. Um, Remember that that those are really your foundation. And if you have questions about those, go back to our earlier webinars where we talked about detox and nutrition. So in addition to, um, of course, all of that, natural solutions like essential oils really can be the first line of defense and are really very effective at targeting specific areas of concern with our skin. So one thing I do want to note here, though, is that number one, I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not here to give you medical advice. If there is a problem or a condition that is persisting that you're not getting solutions with, and this applies to everything I'm going to share with you tonight, um, anything that you have cause for concern, you should seek proper medical attention. And you may find, as I have, is uh, as I have, that you can continue to combine your natural solutions with any medical treatments that may or may not become necessary, okay? So there's a wide, wide, wide array of essential oils that can be used for the skin. And some of these are really obvious, like geranium, lavender. You probably already know lavender is excellent for the skin or melaleuca is first aid for the skin. You might, you probably know that already, right? But there's some others that may be a little lesser known, like birch. Birch is actually a great essential oil to use for skin. It works really well in ointments and creams and compresses because it's especially helpful for inflamed skin. So any inflammation of the skin like eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, birch would be great in any kind of a salve ointment that you would make. Um, to be able to help with that inflammation. So again, we're going to be talking about lots of different recipes. So if you haven't grabbed a pen and paper yet, please grab that right now because we're going to be diving deep into skin. Now, when we talk about skin, there's four key ways that you can use your essential oils. And I want to touch on these really quick because I'm going to cover these um, in a lot of detail. 
tonight. The first way, sorry, I didn't mean to advance there. Um, so the first way is you can directly apply it to the skin. So when I say directly apply it, it means I, it means you still use a carrier. And it, what I'm saying is you're putting this, the oil directly on the skin with the carrier oil and not in some kind of product that you're either purchasing or making. So that's a topical, direct topical application. The, di the next way is when you're um, adding specific oils to your favorite cleanses, your favorite lotions, your favorite moisturizers that you already have to give your favorite products a little edge, a little boost. Um, and that's a really easy way to apply them. So you might have an unscented hand lotion that you love, and you might just add a couple of essential drops of essential oil to that and apply it to the skin. Okay. So that's the second way. The third way is by using doTERRA's infused skincare line. They have um, several skincare lines that are designed specifically for specific kinds of skin, like an anti-aging line, a skin rejuvenation, clean, you know, so there's, there's the, um, the HD clear line, which is great for acne prone skin. So we, we're going to get into that and in briefly in just a little bit. And then the fourth way is DIY. So DIY stands for do it yourself. And that is where you know, you get to choose 100% of the ingredients that are in your skincare routine and you get to make your own products. Some people love to do this, some people not so much. However, I will touch on it briefly at the end of our call so that you can get some resources and some ideas on how you can make your own products. So those are the four ways, direct application, applying to your existing products, using the doTERRA essential oil infused product lines or doing and creating your own DIY projects and um, products. Okay, so a few simple rules that you probably already know, but we'll just create a little foundation for those of you who are new, is that you always want to use essential oils safely on the skin. So a good rule, I'm going to give you three basic rules to follow. First rule is to dilute the essential oils. Almost always we will dilute um, the essential oils. And a good rule of thumb is three drops of a carrier oil to one drop of essential oil. I rarely measure anything. I just kind of wing it and it works great that way. So don't get too um, caught up on specific numbers of drops, but just know that some essential oils are a little bit hotter on the skin, a little bit more caustic to the skin, and you might need to dilute them a little bit more. And anytime something is irritating to the skin, use a carrier oil to um, further dilute it. You can put that right on top of it even after you've applied it. Don't try to wash off with water because that will intensify. So if something is feeling hot, too warm, or intense on the skin, don't add water, but just add more carrier oil. Always, always, it's recommended also to start with a smaller dose, like one or two drops, and then repeat that dose more frequently. So my rule of thumb is always less is more, more often. So don't start out with 12 drops, start out with one drop, and then just repeat that like every four hours as needed. And then last rule to follow is to make sure you avoid the very sensitive areas of our body. So the skin around our eyes, the inner ears, don't drop the oils directly down the ears. And if you have a really damaged, broken skin, be very cautious and maybe not apply the oils directly to significantly damaged skin. All right, I wanna to touch next on carrier oils because we typically talk about fractionated coconut oil as the end all for carrier oils. And I do use that primarily as my primary um, uh, dilution oil, so my carry, my primary carrier oil. However, there are um, others that work really well also. Some people have an allergy to coconut and can't use coconut oil. And sometimes we have a severely drying type of skin condition where we need to use something even heavier than coconut oil. So I want to give you a couple of quick suggestions. So first of all, you can also use almond oil or jojoba, and jojoba is a, an, another excellent carrier oil that can be used, especially with things like psoriasis, where you're wanting that extra moisturizing. And I also really like aloe vera. So aloe vera, most commonly um, people think of aloe vera as the green goop that they buy at the drugstore to apply after they've had a sunburn. However, as you can see on the screen here, um, that the typical, um, Aloe vera that you purchase has lots of extra yucky ingredients in there, like the 
um, polymers and polysorbates and um, fragrances and food coloring and aluminum and all these other things that you don't need. So where I usually purchase my aloe vera gel is from Amazon. Make sure that you're getting the organic from the pulp so that's at the actual scraped out inside part of that aloe vera plant, that pulp, and it should only have a couple of ingredients um, and it shouldn't have any of these ingredients like you see on the screen. And look for pure and possibly organic aloe vera gel. Now with that, I would suggest you buy the biggest bottle that you can find and afford because there really are so many wonderful applications of using the aloe vera gel as a carrier. And I'm gonna share with you my top five reasons why I would choose aloe vera over either a coconut or a jojoba. So these five reasons are number one, for burns. I really like and prefer aloe vera for burns over coconut oil. Um, anytime I'm addressing a burn, just the aloe vera alone has such healing properties for a burn. And then when you add essential oils like lavender to it, it has an incredibly cooling and healing effect. So we'll get into some recipes for different types of burns in just a minute, but just know that number one, my number one reason for using um, aloe would be for a burn. Number two is I would also use aloe for funguses. Any fungus issues, any fung topical fungal conditions of the skin will oftentimes get worse when we cover them with a heavy carrier oil. So this carrier allows you, the aloe will allow you to um, blend your essential oils so you can dilute them and apply them to the skin without putting a heavy covering on top of them. So things like ringworm, athlete's foot, those types of things, um, even candida rashes, I really prefer the aloe. Um, the third reason I would choose aloe is for itching. So poison ivy, mosquito bites. Um, if you, when we're going to talk about recipes tonight, I have one for you for poison ivy. Just think itching. Think maybe aloe would be a better base for my essential oils. The fourth reason I would use um, the aloe would be generally speaking for eczema. Um, you can kind of go either way with the eczema. You can use carrier oil like coconut. Um, coconut oil for that, but I'm kind of leaning towards using um, aloe more for the eczema because it really helps with the inflammation. Aloe itself has wonderful anti-inflammatory properties, and so it's going to help to reduce that swelling and puffiness that's associated with eczema. And I also love using aloe for hand sanitizers. So we talked last week about um, your your kids and keeping your kids healthy and sending them back to school and we talked about making your own hand sanitizer and this is so easy to do you just take a little small spray bottle and put about an ounce of aloe vera gel in there and and add about 15 maybe 20 drops of your favorite essential oil in there mine happens to be on guard and then you can um, use that as a spritzer for all for as a hand sanitizer that doesn't have any of those nasty chemicals in it. So it smells good. You just rub your hands after you sprayed it on your palms. It might feel a little bit sticky for just a second until it dries and then you're good to go. So which oils are good for my skin? So this is a loaded question and there are so many. And next week I'll have a chart for you on all of the different oils for each body system. And you'll see there are just so many different essential oils that support our skin. However, if you want to jot down the top five oil, single oils that we use all the time for skin, they would be lavender, sandalwood, geranium, frankincense, and heliochrysum. Those are the ones that we use a lot for our skin. Not the only ones, but if you weren't sure what to do with whatever skin condition you have going on, if you picked one of those five, you'd probably have a pretty good chance of having some finding some solutions. Now, the top two blends that I love for the skin are Immortel and HD Clear. And we'll be talking more about these tonight. But just jot those down. Generally speaking, those would be the top oils for skin. 
But now we're going to get specific and we're going to talk about some specific issues that and, and how you can manage those and how you can really be an expert in your own home on using essential oils for skincare. So one of the questions that we frequently get asked is about essential oil safety with wounds. Like, is it okay to use the oils directly on the wounds or should we use it beside it or around it? Can I put a Band-Aid over them? Can I cover them? Should I leave it uncovered? So let's talk about how to manage these you know, minor cuts and scrapes and wounds and things that happen and that you are totally capable of handling on your own at home. So first thing is you want to build some kind of a first aid kit. So you want to create your essential first aid kit with your essential oils. So one, um, the first thing that I would suggest you put in your kit is some unbleached cotton squares. And the reason why you want to have those in your kit is that you sometimes need to cover the wound, not always, um, but you want the wound to still be able to breathe. It needs to heal from the inside out and you don't want to keep bacteria trapped onto the skin. So it's best not to cover it with um things that, you know, that don't allow it to breathe. But another reason why we don't want to use band-aids is because the band-aids can be very caustic to the skin when you combine them with oils. It can even cause burning on the skin. So for example, if you put a drop of oregano on the skin and cover that with a band-aid that doesn't breathe, um, it's going to trap that aroma in there and it's going to intensify it and it's probably going to cause a burn or cause ir significant irritation to the skin. Another reason why we don't want to generally use band-aids with oils is that a lot of band-aids have polymers in them. And when we use them in combination with the oils, the oils can melt the polymers into the skin. And the same would be true with your nail polish. So if you're using, if you have, if you're helping someone and you're, you, and you're um, helping them with their wound and you have nail polish on your hand, the same thing could happen. So it's good to use gloves which is the next thing you want to have in your kit, um, non-latex gloves. A lot of people are allergic to latex and oftentimes they don't know that they're allergic until the first time someone touches them with a latex. So it's a really good idea to have gloves in your kit just because you don't want to be swapping and sharing bacteria and you don't want to be touching a wound with bare hands um, and you don't want to be exposing each other to each other's bacteria. So the next thing you want in your kit are assorted and various bottles and spritzers and roller bottles and possibly little salve containers. So where you can get these is on Aroma Tools. And I would suggest you start out with a couple of small spritzer bottles, like quarter ounce, to an ounce type size bottles. What I actually love to do is I love to repurpose my 15 milliliter essential oil bottles and then just relabel them for a new purpose. So I buy the spritzer, the spray tops from Aroma Tools, and then I remove my cap and the orifice reducer and then create my remedies and then just put a spritzer right on top of my existing essential oil bottle. So that's one a little fun tip, something that I do. All right, so one more thing you might want to have in your wound care kit is just a, a, a a nice glass, doesn't really matter the size bottle, could be a little bit larger, um, just with something with pure water, pure clean filtered water so that you can, if necessary, spray clean and um, irrigate a wound. Okay, now let's get into some specific recipes. What are you gonna put in your, to your little spritzer bottles? So the first spritzer that you should make is for wound cleansing. And for this first one, you could label it wound cleansing. And for this, you could use water as your base, but remember that oil and water doesn't really mix too well, so you're gonna to wanna to shake that. Um, before you spray it and keep, continue to shake it. The rest of these will put some other type of carrier in there, but I, I typically just use like water for this. Um, and then add to it a couple drops of frankincense, lavender, and helichrysum. So depending on the size of your bottle, you might need to adjust the amount. If it's the little quarter um, ounce bottles, then you could probably do like three drops of frankincense, three drops of lavender, two drops of helichrysum. So adjust that as needed. Again, you're not going to mess anything up by measuring four drops or five drops instead of two drops. 
Um, the point is just get your essential oils in there and then make sure you wrote, put your cap lid on it or your spritzer top on it and then just rotate it, roll it, um, shake it a little and then give it a little test spray and then um, and then you can go ahead and spray this right onto the skin and you can just spray it right over the wound, allow it to go out maybe an inch or two beyond the wound and let that just settle right onto the skin. The next spritzer that you're going to want in your kit is um, what you want to label cuts and scrapes. So this could be for all kinds of different little abrasions, cuts, scrapes that happen. And in this one, I would encourage the oils of lavender, lemon, and bergamot. And again, so for this one, you could use um, either any of the carrier oils that we talked about earlier. Probably a fractionated coconut oil would work great here. And then maybe three drops of lavender, two drops of lemon, two drops of bergamot. Now, we started with the wound cleansing, and then we choose a specific remedy um, after that. So step one is always the wound cl cleansing. And then if it's a cuts or scrapes, then we do this after the cuts and scrapes will follow the wound cleansing. Now, what if it's poison ivy? Well, we would start with the same number one, the same wound cleansing remedy that we first talked about, but we'll use a different, um, remedy after we've cleaned the wound. So for poison ivy, I would suggest, I like and have found success with four drops of lavender, three drops of melaleuca, or, and two drops of purify, or at least roughly that ratio, of course, adjusted if you have a larger bottle. Now, the purify is awesome be in this case because it's really great at detoxing against poison ivy, and we even use purify as well for spider bites and even things like brown recluse spiders. Now, it's really important with all of these, and, and I'll just say this now because this applies to all the different skin issues, is the more you touch it, the more likely it is that you're going to postpone healing. So don't rub it, don't squeeze it, don't touch it, don't scratch it, don't pop it, don't pinch it, right? The more we leave it alone, the faster it's going to heal and less likely it is going to be to spread. So, um, so hands off, right? So then the first step again is to clean it. The second step is to apply a remedy. And then if necessary, then we cover. So going back to cuts and scrapes for a minute, if there is a cut or a scrape that you feel it needs to be covered, then what you would do is after you've cleansed and after you've put your remedy on, then you're going to apply one square of cotton on top. Um, and then you want to tape with hypoallergenic tape and tape that down. Oh, just make sure it's hypoallergenic. That would be something else to add to your kit. Um, only leave it covered though, as much as you need to have it covered. So if you're needing to go to work or you're needing to go out in the yard, or if you're going to be around a lot of people, then for sure, if you're going to be in crowds or you have to go outside, then cover it with the cotton square. But if you're going to be home and if it's possible to leave it open, that would be great because it will allow the air to encourage to encourage the wound to heal and help it to heal. So that's when I would cover it. I would cover it when I go out, um, when I go to work, when I go out in the yard, or when I'm exposed to crowds. But otherwise, if possible, I would leave it open. All right, the next one is rash. So for rash, again, we can start with the first remedy, which was wound cleansing, and then apply this specific remedy. And so for rash, um, when I say rash, I'm not necessarily talking about a candida rash. Um, or a yeast rash, but um, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so this would be more like a heat rash, sunburn rash type of thing. And then what I would apply is three drops of Roman chamomile, three drops of lavender, two drops of bergamot, and then you can either use an aloe or a fractionated coconut oil to fill the bottle the rest of the way, and then spray that on the area and let it air out. Next, um, I threw in a couple little remedies for things that aren't necessarily skin, but they would be great in your kit. So I'm gonna throw these in anyway. So for sprains and strains, we like to use roller bottles for these instead of the sprayers because we can roll them right on. And um, in a five milliliter roller bottle, I would add four drops of helichrysum, three drops of wintergreen, two drops of basil, and then fill it the rest of the way with fractionated coconut oil. And I would use this um, with ice and rotating the ice 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. That's very effective. Next, I have muscle cramping. So muscle cramping, 
just general muscle cramping um, in a five milliliter roller bottle, four drops of lemongrass, three drops of deep blue, and one drop of peppermint. And peppermint in this is the driver. It's what drives the other oils into the muscles to relieve that lactic acid. Um, and then you have the deep blue in there that's great for pain and inflammation. So this is a great combination, not only for muscle cramping, but you can also use it, let's say if you've been working in the yard and you have back pain, super effective for something like that. And you can just roll it right onto the area that's sore. Next um, is a remedy for Charlie horses. So this would be more for those who are maybe more intense athletes or runners, and they get um, those crazy Charlie horses. So three drops of lemongrass and the lemongrass is there to grab that lactic acid and get rid of it. Geranium, which is a wonderful long-term soother. Deep blue, um, and that's going to be great for just killing that pain and inflammation. And then wild orange, which is going to help all the other oils to work better and quicker. So for ratio, I would say probably equal parts of all of these, two to three drops of each one in a five milliliter roller bottle. Okay, back to skin. Um, lavender is an excellent essential oil for blisters, and I you can dilute it or you can even use lavender neat, which means directly to the skin without a carrier oil. And I would suggest when you first get something where you think it's going to be a blister starting, apply it every 15 minutes for the first couple hours and then just as needed thereafter. And make sure you're not trying to pop or um, break that blister on your own. Just allow it um, to do what it's going to do naturally on its own and don't try to force that. Um, just apply lavender and you'll be good. All right. So, um, again, back in that wound kit, have maybe some towels, hypoallergen, allergenic tape, maybe some fractionated coconut oil, maybe some Q-tips. Um, so we kind of covered what you'd want to have in that situation. Um, and then just generally speaking, again, to review the steps, overall first step clean, then apply one of the remedies we discussed. And then the third step is to cover it if necessary, not with the bandaid, but with a cotton square. All right, let's talk now just a little bit about diabetic wounds and some of the wound issues that diabetics deal with and how essential oils can support that. So diabetic wounds, um, that aren't healing. The reason why is because they're generally speaking, not getting proper circulation to that area. They may also find that those who are dealing with this may have, um, may not even realize that they even have this going on. They may not even realize it because they have neuropathy that they might also have at the same time. So what we want to do is we want to help promote circulation and healing to the skin. And so the first step we want to do is we want to take two drops of lemon, two drops of lavender, and one drop of Purify. And it looks like I missed typing Purify on the screen. So just write that down. Two drops of lemon, two drops of lavender, and one or two drops of Purify. Mix it into some Epsom salts, maybe just a teaspoon, not very much. Mix the oils into the salts and then distribute the salts into some warm water that's in some kind of a vessel. So like a dish pan or a bucket so that you can soak the body, the foot or the body part in that, so in that, um, soak and do the soak for six to seven minutes. Then after that, go ahead and elevate the foot, um, just gently towel dry around, but not on the wound, just around the foot or other parts and allow the wound itself to air dry. And then apply a spritzer of lavender, frankincense, and heliochrism to that area to encourage healing. So again, this could be any of the carrier oils that we talked about as a base with lavender, frankincense, and heliochrism. Um, you don't need to cover this unless you need to. And um, you would want to spritz several times per day. Next, um, the next issue that diabetics can deal with are cuts and tears. And so again, soak with the same remedy that we just talked about, lemon, lavender, purify. Do the soak and then use a spritzer. In this time, I would use lavender, myrrh, and um, sandalwood. That seems to be very healing for um, diabetic cuts and tears. So again, lavender, myrrh, and sandalwood. All right, let's talk now about funguses on the skin. So we talked earlier about carrier oils. And do you remember what we said, which carrier oil we prefer for fungus? Um, I like aloe. So this is a recipe for like an athlete's foot that would be um, really, really effective. And so I would use 
a bottle with about three quarters filled with aloe vera gel, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, which is um, it has probiotics in it, and then 10 drops of Melaleuca, 10 drops of Arborvitae, maybe two drops of oregano. That's optional um, because oregano can be hot depending on where you're, where it's going. Um, and then another option here would be rosemary because it's also very antifungal. That could be something you could substitute for oregano. So anyway, you could also then top it off with a little bit of witch hazel, which witch hazel here is really optional. So let's say if I had a three or four ounce bottle, the ratios I would use there would be like two ounces of aloe vera, half an ounce of apple cider vinegar and like a half an ounce of witch hazel. Again, you can't mess this up. Just put all that stuff in a bottle and spray it and you'll be amazed at how well that works for athlete's foot and skin funguses. Um, sunburns. For sunburns, um, again, I like aloe vera as the base and in a bottle, um, I, you know, I think my bottle might be four four or six ounces. I'm not sure. Um, I'll fill that with aloe vera and then I'll put 25 drops of lavender, um, maybe 25 drops of helichrysum and like 10 drops of peppermint in there. The peppermint's going to be cooling. The lavender and the helichrysum are going to be healing. And then just spray that on the area. I tend to make up bigger bottles of this just because I don't just use it in the summer. I actually use it when I get out of the shower. I love this. I'll even spray a little bit in my hair. Um, and I love the way it feels. Again, it kind of has that slightly sticky feel just for the, while you're rubbing it in and then it's totally gone and it feels amazing and really anti-inflammatory and healing for the skin. Um, for warts, we've dealt with warts a little bit and what we have found to be very successful is a ratio of 50-50 frankincense and oregano and applying it directly. Um, I generally, if it's like on the feet or hands, I generally don't dilute it at all. I use the frankincense actually to dilute the oregano, but if it was on my face or other sensitive area, then I would um, dilute it. I've just found that it takes a little bit longer for some reason for the warts to go away and um, they, it's very quick if I just do this straight 50-50 ratio. That's what we have found very successful. All right, let's talk about psoriasis. So psoriasis is a pretty rare skin condition, um, but I seem to get asked about it quite a bit. So it's a condition that affects about 3% of the population. And people who have it develop these red bumps on their skin that become really inflamed and flaky and crusty, and they get silvery scales on the skin. And the most common place that most people get this is on the scalp or on the elbows or knees. And some say that psoriasis is kind of related to the immune system breaking down and others believe that this is more genetic, but either way, we haven't really been able to pinpoint the exact cause, but essential oils can be very beneficial to helping those um, and soothing for those who are dealing with psoriasis and they can help in different ways, right? They can help with inflammation, with moisturizing the skin. They can help with emotional support. They can help with detox. Now the most cited essential oils that support psoriasis are lavender, rose, thyme, melaleuca, and helichrysum. And an alternative for rose, because rose is a little bit harder to get, a little bit, a lot more expensive. Um, the, the, um, oil that I would use in place of rose would be geranium. So rose or geranium. Now you might consider using a heavier carrier oil with psoriasis, something like jojoba, because it's very moisturizing. It's going to be similar to the structure of sebum wax, which is the skin's own lubricant. Um, or you can combine jojoba with some coconut oil or maybe even with some argon oil. So you have some options for carrier oils that you can try. And there's a couple recipes I want to give you. First is for a bath. And I would suggest getting two cups of Epsom salts. And then to that, those salts add four drops of helichrysum, four drops of bergamot, and two drops of white fur, and three drops of Roman chamomile. And then, uh, then stir that in together with the Epsom salts, and then a add the salt mixture into a warm bath and soak for 25 to 30 minutes and do that three to four times a week. So that's going to be really soothing and calming for the inflammation. The next thing um, when you're dealing with uh, psoriasis on the scalp is to add melaleuca to your shampoo. And then the third thing is creating your own um, 
massage oils for the skin by using some sort of a carrier like we talked about and then adding to that six to 30 drops. I mean, it really, there's no magic sauce here. You can just um, kind of experiment with the following oils, lavender, melaleuca, geranium, thyme, and helichrysum. So adding a few drops of each of those into maybe a jojoba oil and then experimenting with that on the skin. Now, one thing I want to mention here before we go on again and kind of reiterate is that the impact of using essential oils for psoriasis or dermatitis or eczema or any of these skin conditions is really going to be enhanced if you do it in conjunction with other holistic methods like adopting a healthier lifestyle, like, you know, considering your diet, like you know, physical activity, like meditation and mental well-being. So all of those things play a part, of course, in our skin, and we will have greater um, effect and a more um, impact when we use the essential oils, when we consider all of these other methods, especially with, as we move on here to eczema. So I have a personal experience and a personal story with eczema which you may or may not have heard me share already. But basically, I dealt with this on and off for a lot of my adult life. And what I have personally found, and this is my experience, this may may or may not be your experience, but I have found a direct connection between my gut health and eczema. So um, I've also found a connection with certain foods that I am sensitive to, like gluten, like wheat, Um, When I eat those, I'm more prone to eczema, but I've also found that um, as I've gotten older, those are sensitivities that I didn't have when I was younger. And so it's really about healing the gut first, because a lot of times food sensitivities do go away as we heal the gut. Um, So anyway, I I can't um, emphasize enough the importance of, of creating that healthy lifestyle and oftentimes doing detox. So for me, my gut was really gear. Um, the issues that I was having were from, um, an over an excess of candida in the gut, which was causing leaky gut and causing, um, things to get into the, you know, spill out through the gut wall and get into the bloodstream and causing all kinds of different issues with my skin. Um, what I found to be most helpful wasn't something I put topically on the skin. What I personally found to be most helpful was to do detox. So I went on an anti-candida diet for several months. I I did the 30-day cleanse, and I repeated that 30-day cleanse one month on, one month off, one month on, one month off, and I did that for several months. And um, and then just focus on other good... um, you know, good nutrition and good foods for healing the gut. And that's what ultimately made my eczema like go away, stay away and to have long-term success. So the recipe that you see out here on the screen is great for soothing, but I really think if you're going to find long-term success, it has to be from the inside out. Um, so this recipe for eczema or dermatitis, you could use fractionated coconut oil, or I might actually choose an aloe up to you. I would probably lean more towards the aloe, but you can experiment and add about 10 drops of frankincense, 10 drops of lavender, 10 drops of melaleuca, three drops of lemongrass, four drops of juniper berry, and five drops of geranium. All right, let's move on and talk um, a little bit about infections of the skin. So sometimes we might get something that looks like it might be just a little pimple or a spider bite, and it turns into something that is a little bit scary. Um, There's a lot of different bacteria, gram positive, gram negative types of bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics out there. Um, I know my sister personally dealt with one and, um, and sometimes these are, are resistant to antibiotics. And so it's a good idea, of course, to seek medical care when, when things like that happen. But we find oftentimes that essential oils are a great complement to the medical side because um, a lot of the antibiotics do not work for some of these skin infections. So the slides that you're seeing are from um, a convention that was a while back. And in it was presented, this was a study that was presented at the convention that showed that there were, they tested different essential oils against gram positive and gram negative bacteria and found some oils that had significant activity against these, um, against these, um, 
bacteria. And so the next slide just basically shows the different um, constituents of essential oils that have been very effective against these gram-positive, gram-negative bacteria. So the primary constituents in these essential oils that help to um, kill the bacteria are phenols, aldehydes, and tropolones. And this, this is based on that study. So when you cross-reference back to the aldehydes, the tropolones, the phenols, what essential oils are out there that are high or rich in these particular constituents? So if you look at aldehydes, um, lemongrass, cinnamon, cilantro, cassia, and melissa are all very high in aldehydes. And the two highest of those would be lemongrass and cassia. So if I were looking for a, an, an aldehyde-rich essential oil that I could use to use topically on the skin to be able to help fight off infections of the skin, I would definitely incorporate cassia and lemongrass. Now, if I look at aldehydes, I'm sorry, tropolones, the, one of the essential oils that's really rich in tropolones is arborvitae. And then lastly, the, one, the oils that are really rich in phenols are going to be oregano, thyme and clove and of those the clove and oregano are the highest so if i were dealing with some kind of a skin issue that was clearly um in that realm of you know infectious i would be for sure considering incorporating or making a blend with a few of these oils like lemongrass cassia um oregano, clove, and arborvitae. I also know from stories that I've heard back from others that rose essential oil can also be a really great oil to throw in here, or maybe even geranium. So I would make a blend. I would. These are very hot, caustic oils to the skin. You, you are going to need to use some kind of a carrier oil. And I would also encourage you to look at incorporating GX Assist and On Guard Soft Gels um, and possibly the DDR Prime um, orally and take by mouth those three and maybe alternate them. So a GX in the morning, a DDR and a on guard soft gel in the evening and just kind of do one a day of each. Something like that would be really helpful as well. All right, so lastly, I'm just going to touch on a few of the um, best anti-aging oils, a few of the best oils for imperfections, and then we're going to wrap up. So first of all, for skin imperfections, my favorite is Melaleuca, and my second favorite is Geranium. So those are my absolute best top picks for um, acne and blemishes and it just general skin imperfections. I know a friend of mine had, her son was dealing with pretty severe acne and they had a Kangen water system, which is where you can, um, it'll put out like either acidic water or alkaline water. And so she did an, an acidic water with uh, melaleuca, drops of melaleuca in a spray bottle. And then he would mist that onto his face several times per day. And that was super effective and convenient for him. I like to spot treat with geranium, just just um, not just neat, just just a little bit on my finger and just dab it onto the areas. Some people like HD Clear. For me, that's a little bit harsh on my skin, so I typically don't use that. But some people love it. Um, frankincense is really great for reducing imperfections. Immortel as well can be really great. So those are some suggestions. And then for anti aging. The best um, oils for that would be frankincense, patchouli, helichrysum, myrrh, and immortelle. And then um, for smoothing out the complexion, I love blue tansy. It's my new favorite oil for smoothing out complexion. It is really fun to use. Use it at night because it does turn your skin blue. So I like to incorporate it in with like a, a lotion or into my skincare routine or into my facial serum. And, um, and that has been really great for smoothing out skin. So that's my number one. My second one favorite would be geranium. And then after that, I would say coriander, clary sage, helichrysum, myrrh, sandalwood, and ylang-ylang. All right, so earlier I mentioned that another way that you can enjoy the benefits of essential oils is through using infused products that doTERRA has already created for you and also DIY where you make your own products. So let's touch on those really briefly and then we'll wrap up. 
All right, so the first collection, there's a couple of different collections that doTERRA has to offer, but the first one is Virage. And it is truly like the best natural ingredients um, of essential oils, emollients, plant extracts that really helps keep your skin feeling nourished and hydrated. And it really does an amazing job at, at reducing those visible signs of aging. So I love it. It consists of the four primary parts that you want to be doing every day, which is cleansing, the um, toning and moisturizing, and then it also includes a serum. And each of these products is really truly composed of gifts from the earth, nourishing plant extracts, those powerful potent essential oils that we love, and the natural ingredients, which I love. So it really harnesses the powerful plants um, and leaves your skin with everything that it needs. The next line or the next collection that doTERRA has to offer is the HD Clear Facial Kit. Now this kit is really geared towards more acne prone skin. It uses essential oils and plant extracts to help smooth the skin and clear the skin and this can be really great at um, for you know gentle and calming to the skin um, for those flare-ups to kind of promote a, a healthy complexion. And the third collection that um, you have to choose from is the essential skincare. And this is my favorite, to be honest. Um, I would say if I were trying to choose between one of these, this is where I would start. And I think you'll love it. I love the toner. I love the smell, the aroma of the facial cleanser. This tightening serum is amazing. I use it on my neck because I'm, um, you know, starting to get a little bit of that saggy neck that goes happens in your mid 40s and I use it around my eyes to kind of help with the with the wrinkles around the eyes. So I love this skincare system. And what's really cool about it is that the kit itself, there's a, it's customizable. So it comes with a basic cleanser, scrub, toner, and serum. And then from there, you can customize your kit by adding at a discounted price, you can add um, up to two more products that are um, discounted to go with it. And there's an anti-aging eye cream, the anti-aging moisturizer, or the hydrating cream, and there's a brightening gel that is so awesome. So for sure, if you haven't tried it, I would highly recommend um, checking this one out and trying this product. I actually just got a, a text just today from a customer, and I want to share with you what she had to say. So I literally got this this morning at 9.30 and she said, wow, the skincare is amazing. Finally, one that helps my dermatitis rather than causes it. It only has been three full days, but my skin looks so good that I just don't even want to wear makeup anymore because it covers up the beautiful skin. So I thought that was really cute and um, just such a great, it's how I feel using it and, um, and I get feedback like that all the time. Okay, so... One more product that you might be interested in is the facial, um, the Reveal Facial System. This is a two-part system. This isn't something that you would use on a daily basis. This is more like doing your at-home facial, and it is like a more intense scrub. So there's a refining polish, and then there's a peptide activator that you use on top of that in a two-step. So that would be used maybe once or twice a month. Um, as like your, your, your home facials that we also have a mud mask. So this is another in Do doTERRA's, um, essential oil infused products that we love. And of course I can't not mention the hairline. I could not live without the, the hairline. Um, I use the shampoo, the conditioner, the serum, and the glaze every day. I love the conditioner. I wouldn't be able to comb out my tangly hair without it. Um, the Root to Chip Serum is amazing, not just for hair, you guys, but even for issues of the skin, any issues of the skin, even like little bumps and weird little cuts and scrapes on the skin. I'll just dab my Root to Tip Serum on it, and it is so amazing because it's infused with essential oils and it has argan oil in it. And then I use the glaze instead of hairspray. So after I style my hair, I just have a little bit of glaze in my hand, and I'll just squeeze it kind of into my curls to just kind of give it a light hold. But you can also use it with wet hair. That's just how I prefer to use it. All right, so... 
We have other spa products that you can check out like body butters and lip balms that are also infused as well. Now I want to quickly mention DIY and I'm not going to do recipes because we're out of time, but I do want to point you to some resources and give you some ideas of some fun things that you can make. So if, if you're into making your own products rather than buying the infused products, definitely go to doterrablog.com and check out some of the awesome recipes that are over there, you guys. There's so many great things like a cuticle cream, bronzing lotion stick, there's a strawberry lime sugar scrub, there's a DIY clay facial mask, there's um, a DIY razor relief serum that you can make, lotion bars, shaving cream. So there's so many different ways that you guys can bring essential oils into your skincare routine. Um, like I said from the beginning, you can choose to use direct application of essential oils. You can choose to add essential oils to your existing product line, or you can use infused the essential oil infused line that doTERRA has, the collections that are already available, or you can make your own. In whatever way you choose to bring essential oils into your skincare, care routine, you're sure to see an amazing improvement of your overall skin. And um, hopefully tonight's been helpful in giving you some ideas on some ways that we can deal with different problems that arise in our skin as well. Now, for those of you who aren't um, on the loyalty rewards program, just know that this is the most cost-effective way, the smartest way to purchase oils. If you're trying to build your stash, your, your home collection, your home pharmacy of essential oils, then um, this is the the best way to do it, because not only do you get your 25% wholesale discount, but you can get up to another 30% back in free product credits, which is like a 55% discount off of the retail pricing. So smart to do it this way. And it's something that you can do um, cancel at any time once you've had the oil, had have collected the oils that you need. Definitely check this out. If you're not familiar with how to do this, reach out to me or ask on our Facebook wall. Now, um, if you are interested in getting your product paid for, for every month like I did and I did this in the first couple months of using the oils I just shared the essential oils with a few friends and family and of course they love them and um, doTERRA likes to generously reward those who share the life enhancing properties of essential oils with their loved ones and so within a couple months I had my oils totally paid for you guys and I had was able to purchase any oils that I wanted on a monthly basis and I got them for free um, if you're interested in that or potentially even earning a supplement or supplement mental or, um, replacement income, which is what I've actually done now, um, now that I've been with doTERRA for a while, um, by sharing, teaching, and educating other people, then let us know. We have some mentoring programs and ways to teach you and help you to be successful in doing that. So next week's class is on body systems. It's going to be class number six. It's actually one of my favorites because we get to dive into talking about which specific oils are good for each specific body system. And you won't want to miss that. That's going to be next week. And, um, and there's the rest of our lineup. So thank you so much again for your time, for being here, for your willingness to learn. And um, hopefully we've been able to provide tons of value and you guys will have be empowered to manage those skin care, skin issues that come up on a regular basis. Thanks so much and leave a comment or send me a message if you have any other questions. Take care.